I don't know that we would have thought this would have been an intriguing game three or four weeks ago, but it is now. Welcome to the NFL. The Steelers and the Panthers. The Steelers come in as a three-point uh, underdog. Carolina with Sam Darnold and company winning at Seattle last Saturday as we've or last Sunday as we've already talked about. Uh, 37 and a half, not a lot of points for the total. 37 and a half for the total. Panthers favored by three. Uh, the Panthers still alive, as we're talking about at the moment with an interim coach in the NFC South. They're at home. Steelers, do you realize with a five and eight record can get in the conversation with three to go if they can win this game at Carolina? This has some intrigue here in Charlotte. All right, let's get into it. No official play. Scott Kellen, quick thought on Pittsburgh, which is three and zero against the NFC South, having beaten the Buccaneers, Saints, and Falcons already playing at Carolina. Yeah, I played the under earlier in the week, TJ, at 38 and a half. It's come down now, so I'm not recommending it now. If it goes back up to 38 and a half, uh, I, I would play that uh, if, if anyone's listening. I make the number about 34 and a half, 35. So um, if I can get 38 and a half, I think there's value on the under here. One of the reasons I kind of lean towards the under now and, and took it earlier in the week, Carolina, over the last six weeks, they've kind of found their profile here. They're running the ball 64% of the time. They're just grinding out the clock. They ran the ball 46 times last week, and the week before that, they ran it 46 times. Uh, and, and they're doing that uh, along with a pretty good defense as well. So they're going to grind this game, eat the clock, and the Steelers are still bringing a pretty form formidable defense here as well. So they're not going to make it easy for Carolina like it might have been uh, last week against Seattle. I lean towards uh, Pittsburgh here a little bit as well, and I would love to you know, possibly take them in a teaser. If it was goes back down to 2.5, I might consider teasing them up to 8.5. Because uh, I don't think Carolina, with a with a low total like this, and the, their their want and ability to run the ball, I don't think they're going to get great separation against a pretty good defensive team in Pittsburgh, and a Pittsburgh team that has only lost a few games by more than seven points this year. So, uh, if 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 this line would go back to two and a half, where we could tease across to three and a seven, I would certainly be interested in teasing Pittsburgh. I kind of want to see how this quarterback plays out as well, because. They're, they're practicing like three quarterbacks right now. I don't I don't know who's going to play. Uh, and Trubisky did not look good last week. I don't want anything to do with really Mason Rudolph. And, you know, we'll see if Pickett plays. But um, I lean towards the under, lean towards Pittsburgh, and would use t uh, Pittsburgh in a teaser uh, if the line dropped down to two and a half. I have not looked, and again, we're doing this live on Thursday in the 1 Eastern time hour, if Kenny Pickett has, co has cleared concussion protocol. He had one earlier in the year in the Buccaneer game, has another one now. He may not be available because of that in the NFL guidelines, to Scott's point. Uh, Chris, your thoughts on this with Carolina running the ball with Deonta Foreman and Chuba Hubbard, even the absence of Christian McCaffrey, as Scott pointed out, they're running it well. Any quick thoughts on them hosting the Steelers? Well, yeah, I mean, first of all, Chuba Hubbard, that has to be better than one of the better names in the NFL right now, that's for sure. Uh, sounds like a football name. Uh, but, yeah, I wish Kenny Pickett was playing because he's he's been really playing well. Uh, and that's what kind of has me off this game. Like, we don't know what's happening at quarterback. It sounds like some of the Steelers' wide receivers are coming out and saying they're in support of Mason Rudolph. I don't know how you could be in support of Mitch Trubisky after coming in, into that game last week. He threw three bad interceptions. And the Ravens were trying to give that game away, right? And the Steelers just couldn't win it. Um, so, it, and, and it's tough on the other end too, because Carolina has been very impressive. Their defense has been very impressive. Um, they have a ton of sacks the past four weeks and they've been running on everybody. They ran over 200 yards on Denver, so they could probably still run on Pittsburgh. The only game recently where they got stymied was against the Ravens only ran for 36 yards in that one. So you know, Pittsburgh can stop the run They're They're obviously a good defense overall. So, you know, an under looks like it's. Probably a good look in this game. I just I think the number's right. I don't really have a ton of value there on that end either. So um, just a game with a lot of question marks. And these these Carolina Panthers are officially in second place in the NFC South with a three and one divisional record. They could win the NFC South if they keep on winning. Uh, you know the whole division's facing each other these final four weeks too. So a lot to be decided. But very interesting game and an important game for both teams. All right, we will see what Carolina has. Steve Wilkes is the interim coach. He wins. There's sentiment right now for him to get the, the permanent job. If he wins another game or two, he's probably going to end up being the permanent coach, the way they've responded to him. We will wait and see. So the Steelers come in, and again, the Steelers, if they win, are 6-8, and eight, and they're on the fringe of the AFC playoff picture with three games to go. So there's a lot in it for them. Let's see what happens. No official plays from the guys.